All right guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video in the TM Day Show and the Doc Talk series, we are talking all about how to make the happiest version of your life and your medical journey. So that includes how to be more productive, how to have more time for you, and also in how to do things for extracurriculars, that way you can have the future career that you ultimately want. And there's definitely gonna be a lot of great golden nuggets, so go ahead, stay tuned, let's get into it. All right guys, welcome to the TMJ Show. Today we have Chelsea with us. Chelsea, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks for asking. So how can we help you? Um, So I've been watching your uh, YouTube channel for about maybe two years now. Wow. Um, I'm a huge fan. Thank you. <laughs> um, um, I really appreciate the work that you do. Um, and so essentially, I'm just really looking for tips on how to be, I guess, more efficient. Mm -hmm. um, so my first question would be, um, how do I best manage studying enough to do well, um, doing extracurriculars for career development and just basically enjoying my life? <laughs> sure. So tell us a little bit of background of where you are on your medical journey first. Um, so I'm studying in London. So my course is a bit different to the American course, mm -hmm. um, but I'm in my second year out of six years. Um, so this is my last preclinical year before I hit the war. I see. Um, it's next year. Um, so I hope that gives a bit of context. Sure. And then what is your like daily schedule like on a week to week basis? When does your day start? When did it end? Um, well, now during COVID, it, it kind of starts like around maybe 6, 6.30. I get up, I like, you know, have breakfast, get ready for the day, um, just chill for a bit. And then I start my lectures at 9. Um, so I have lectures from 9 to 4.30-ish, sometimes 5. After that, I would like have dinner. Um, maybe chill a bit with my flatmates and then I would study in the evening for about maybe two hours, two and a half hours. Yeah, and then go to bed nine, ten-ish. Sounds good. So what are those specific times again that you're studying? Um, so I try to start studying at like seven mm -hmm. and I end around nine, nine thirty. Okay. In the evenings, anything in the mornings? Um, I used to, but I just, I, I figured out that I don't like studying in the mornings, so I just don't do it then. <laughs> Okay, totally. I mean, I always study whenever you're the most capable of. So your question is how to be efficient and still enjoy your life and then prepare yourself for a future in medicine. Is that like a good summarization? Yeah. Yeah. So the the first part that you mentioned that the most important to you is like, is having this time to do what you want, right? So what are those components in your life that matter? If you had free time, what would you be doing with that? Um, I, I play the flute. Cool. Um, I play volleyball, I like roller skating, and family is really important to me, so just spending time with my family. Perfect. So the first step in having this grand plan for the next four plus years of your life, including when you're actually a doctor, is scheduling those components first, right? So you know you don't like to study in the morning, you have your study times already scheduled. Before you get into like how do I be more efficient, how do I add the extracurriculars, like you want to be able to focus on those. And so you pick how much of that you want to include. But for me, I have to have a part of me that's scheduled daily, right? So I enjoy working out and just like you, I enjoy time with my loved ones. So those two are scheduled into my day before. For me, currently it's residency, but even when medical school is a part of it. Um, so but just to give you an example, you would look at your week schedule and you would schedule the volleyball days that you would play, the days you'd go roller skating, the days you would hang out with your, your loved ones um, and have that part of your schedule, ideally daily. Even if it's 20, 30 minutes, that means that part of you that includes enjoying your life is always done. That part's checked, right? You don't have to be like, oh, I'm doing this, this, and this, and I'm busy. Um, and you know, I hope that now I can include time for my loved ones. It's the opposite. Include those first, you'll be happy and more fulfilled. If anything, you'll be more efficient for the studying and the extracurriculars, right? Um, so that's how I do it. I work backwards, look at my calendar, schedule those things in first. Do you know what kind of medicine you want to go into when we're talking about extracurriculars? Um, not exactly. I'm sort of looking at um, surgery, so maybe cardiothoracic. Cool. Then I also quite like geriatrics, I'm not sure. Cool. So are you doing any types of extracurricular yeah, <laughs> I need a cop there. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying, are you doing any type of extracurriculars at the moment? Um, yes, I'm part of the Medical Education Society at okay. my university. Um, and I just, I coordinate events for first and second years. Perfect. So lectures, um, assembling questions, uh, like SBAs and stuff like that. So I'm doing that. 
and I'm involved in teaching um, medicine basically to the first years. Um, I'm also involved in a quality improvement project at one of the hospitals that is attached to my uni. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's specifically within geriatrics. So we're looking at how to reduce inpatient falls. So there's that. Um, but other than that, not much. <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, that sounds like a full plate. Um, and so the part that I'm glad that you mentioned is that you have an interest in one of those being geriatrics and then one of your extracurriculars aligns with that. Um, and so one thing that you'll be able to do, and this answers your ultimate question of how to be more efficient is once you include you into your schedule first, that, that is a recipe of how you keep yourself happy. And two, you ask yourself, what type of things are you doing right now that correlate with your future interests? So that, you know, quality improvement project is perfect because you can continue it. And then you realize whether you like Jerry or not, or maybe in the future, you learn that this is like not for you. That's perfect too. Um, and so just like we scheduled in time for your volleyball, your loved ones, you schedule in times for those quality improvement projects too. Um, the beauty of all of this is that it helps you do the ultimate thing that you want, which is how to be more efficient overall as a person, as a medical student, because now you have less time to study. Okay. And while that may seem anxiety provoking initially, what it forces you to do is saying, okay, now, instead of having four hours to study or two hours to study, I have an hour and a half. So what do I need to take out for that 30 minutes that I already kind of in the back of my head know doesn't really work? And how can I get to the parts of my studying that work the best, right? And a good test of this is imagine if the test was surprisingly tomorrow instead of next month, what would you do differently, right? Um, And that's a good question to ask yourself because it forces you to say, okay, I wouldn't do this, I wouldn't do this, I wouldn't do this. I would just immediately go into these steps that I know work, whether that goes practice questions for some people, Uh, flashcards for other people, you know, writing it on a board for others, like that whole method is different from person to person. So you find what that is for you. But this whole strategy of including yourself first, making those extra curriculars also a part of your day to day um, or your week to week, um, just to help your future interests grow. It also forces you to be more efficient in your studying without adding more hours or falling asleep later, waking up earlier. Um, so that's my ultimate answer. How do you become more efficient? Make sure you're happy, make sure the parts of your career growth that are also important to your happiness and your future happiness are part of it. You don't have to get crazy. You don't have to do a quality improvement project or work on it every single day. Right. But even, even if you're just working on it once a week and it's scheduled, you're like, okay, I'm making moves for my future career. And the final thing is you're like, okay, I have less time. Um, doing the things I was before, studying for my classes, then you get really um, very honed in on what doesn't work. And you take that out and then you start to create this new system that's a little bit more perfect for you. And then the following week, you're like, well, this still doesn't work as well. So I'm going to keep adjusting it. You become more and more efficient with the same amount of time. That's really useful. I particularly liked um, what you said about like keeping myself happy first. Um, so I, I, I really haven't been doing that. Yeah. Um, I, I, so my, my exams are in like a month, like five weeks now. Um, and all I've been thinking of is basically, oh, I really should be studying when I'm trying to do the things that um you know, I like to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I'm just, I'm just not very good at striking that balance. Um, it's either I do too much and I just burn myself out or I'm doing too little. And at the end of like, say two weeks, I realize I haven't done anything for the last two weeks. I really need to like start studying and that starts, you know, um, panicking, uh, anxiety. And you just start to feel like, uh, what am I going to do now? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you, you just painted the scenario of every single medical student in the world is that no one knows the perfect balance, but honestly, if you treat medical school, like your job at the moment, no one's paying you. Right. Um, and most people in other parts in the world, you're paying them. But if you treat it like a job that your job is between whatever hours you set yourself for some people, it's three hours a day. For some people it's 10 hours a day. But if you set it as a job, your goal during that that hours is to get the most amount of knowledge in and retain. Because like that's ultimately what you're supposed to do. Um, then if you have an hour to work out, an hour to spend time with your family, like when I come home, medicine is like done, right? Then I get to focus on those things. But it's much more natural for me because, you know, I go to work and that's it. 
But that's how medical school should be too. You set your work hours and then you, you set your you hours as well. Um, and then the anxiety of that improves over time. Um, so people struggle with this balance because they see 24 hours, seven days a week that are available to medical school. But the problem is, and you're going to know this really quickly, is that when you start to go into the wards and the rotations, your time is even more limited. Um, when you come home, you're going to now be even more trained and the, the desire to study is not going to be there. Um, you're just going to want to go to sleep and then show up into rotations again and repeat, but you're still going to have to study. And so you have to figure out what your work hours are going to be, where your you hours are going to be, where the happiness time is going to be. So that way, this just feels like a natural job. But the beauty is that your job right now is just to learn as best as you can. Um, and the tests are your evaluation, sure. But I always think about this like two to three years in advance. So I would, whatever I'm doing now doesn't seem to be as I don't blow it up in my head. But, you know, you're going to have a patient in six years. You're going to take care of JLC that is possibly going to rely on the information that you're learning now. So it's much easier to learn this naturally. It's like, how can I keep this in the back of my head in case somebody needs this in the future? Um, then it just becomes a fun game of every day. You're adding to that pool that stays in your brain to possibly help somebody four to five, six years from now. Um, but it's still work hours. It's like, these are the times that I work. This is the time that's set for me. So I shouldn't feel guilty during this time because it's for me. And if I don't do this now, it becomes harder to create that system when you're on your rotations, because for you to like work on efficiency and productivity, when really all you want to do is come home and sleep, um, is the recipe for disaster. Cause if you're already having, you know, two plus years where you haven't been able to focus on yourself and you're feeling that burnt out feeling, which is very natural, then it's going to be much harder to do later in the line where unfortunately you're only busier. Uh, when you go into the latter parts of your medical training, you're only going to get busier. When you're an actual physician, you only get busier. So create the good habits now, which are focusing on yourself, treating your education like a job. Um, and so creating whatever those hours are for you and finding during those hours, what are the best uses of your time in case you are stressed or limited on time. So that way you can use those the most effectively. It's kind of, that's the combined recipe to make this successful. And each part of it gets better over time. You just have to make sure that all of those are included. All right guys, hopefully you guys are enjoying this conversation that we're having with Chelsea on how to use her UK education to become a little bit of a combination of more happy, having those extracurriculars that fit with her future careers and also using her time as efficiently as possible. If you guys are enjoying this, just take a quick second on YouTube to go ahead and hit that smash button down below. If you're listening to this on a podcast, go ahead and just take a second to either follow or subscribe based off the podcast platform you're listening to. But let's get back to the episode. How would you sort of deal with a situation where you do set your work hours so say I'm, I'm a medical student from nine to five mm -hmm. um and then after that i'm just you know a regular 20 year old trying to enjoy life what if after work hours i realize i haven't done as much work as i would have liked to and therefore i'm spending my like personal time my free time just thinking about that like how how would you deal with that I think there's a combination, right? So there is a bit of anxiety because the part that you're focused on is how much information that there's left to learn, right? Like you're, you're seeing the exam come up in a week or two and you're worried that whatever information that's going to show up, you're not ready for it, right? That's where the fear comes from. There is amount of knowledge that you need to be prepared for, but you feel like you haven't used the past time to do it. And you feel like your current time could suddenly improve your grade right so there there is a part of your brain naturally overblowing things because we live on anxiety we're anxiety driven creatures where that is the form of it's supposed to be a natural healthy form of stress that makes us do things especially when the due date is tomorrow but for medical students the due date there's no clear due date except the exam um and so it's nice to have a reminder that there is information that you have left to be learned but there is a little bit of a natural practice saying i can't learn everything but I just have to have a system that makes me feel more confident over time that I am getting better at learning everything. So what I mean by that is let's say you're walking into an exam and let's just say you have an exam every month, which is very kind of common practice for most medical students. Every two weeks to every month is kind of like the typical schedule. The way I usually recommend it, especially to a lot of the students that I coach is that, you know, have a list over time of either information that you know is going to show up on the exam. So as you go through your lectures, like start creating a list of all the topics that would show up for lecture one, lecture two, lecture three. Um, and as you're going through your flashcards, your practice questions, however you study, if you miss something, add that to your list. 
Now you have a very overwhelming list at the very start of all the information that could show up. But now when you study from that nine to five, look at that list and saying, I feel more comfortable with A, B, C, and D. This one, I don't feel as comfortable with. That's okay. It's an identification of what's going to be weak and what's really strong. As you get closer and closer to test day, you start focusing on the information you haven't covered as well as the information that is very weak on your list. And so I usually tell a lot of my coaching students to grade their topics. So like if you had a hundred topics, I would grade each topic on a scale of one to five, five being super difficult, one being very easy. And obviously the things that have no grade next to it are things that you haven't got a chance to review. So every time you come to your review, you're like, I'm going to do 30 minutes of new topics that I haven't done. I'm going to do 30 minutes of old topics that are really difficult. And as you get closer and closer to test day, that list becomes smaller in terms of things you haven't seen for the second time. And it also becomes smaller for things that are very difficult because ideally you've seen them a few times. So the answer to your question of like, how do you one out of your, when it's like five to nine, how do you not focus on everything from your nine to five? is during your nine to five, focus on this list and the only focus is tomorrow. This list needs to be smaller than it was yesterday. And then you keep doing it day by day. And then you're five to nine in the evening. You want to ask yourself, like, is this time really going to affect that list dramatically? All right. Or is my, or is it going to affect my happiness more? And usually the answer is it affects your happiness more when you start the day with school and you end your day with school and you go to bed and it feels like you're repeating the process. But if instead you have, you know, you don't need to have four hours to yourself, but if you have dinner and then you have a workout or if you watch a movie or you go out with friends, like that's a part of enjoying yourself as a 20 year old. If you can have segments of those, not even every single day, every other day, a few days a week, but you schedule them first, then you can say this time is responsible for me being focused uh, during that nine to five. Otherwise I'm going to always be burnt out and always be tired and always be anxious. So there's a little bit of practice of over time of being okay with not knowing everything, but there's also this practice of knowing what you need to know. So over time, that list becomes smaller. You can go confident into test day, knowing that you're as prepared as you could be without sacrificing your happiness. That's the two parts of that. How early on should you be looking to tailor your portfolio? a particular specialty because I know I'm only in my second year mm -hmm. um but for some reason I just feel like oh if I don't start now it's going to be too late and I just want to keep my options open um which I'm sure you can understand um and this this goes this is like the common theme that we're talking about here is like how do we let anxiety get out of the way and make sure we just do things that feel natural so you already have two interests that you mentioned, but maybe another interest pops up or one of those two interests fall down. So you mentioned cardiothoracic surgery and geriatrics. So your goal right now being in your second year is saying if four years down the line, when I'm applying for a job or going into residency, or if you, you know, some people choose to go to the States, um, to do their further practice, um, I just want to have enough of a growing experience portfolio that paint me in this future specialty. So if you're thinking of a future in geriatrics, the first step would be one, are you interested in geriatrics? So just like you're doing, you're doing a quality improvement project now, as that starts to um, be a little bit more free of your time, maybe the project is wrapping up, the project is done, or there's like a, a lull period where you're just waiting for other people to do stuff in the project before you take over again. Then those are great opportunities to say, maybe I can use the same time to, you know, uh, shadow the physician that I'm working with on this project in the clinic or find other geriatricians in my area that I could see what clinic is life is like. That way, you know, it's, it's just another more of exposure of check yes or no, whether the specialty is for me. That's kind of what the initial phase is. And, you know, you can do the same thing with cardiothoracic without the pressure of, I need to do X amount over the next few months. It just needs to be uh, an exposure phase initially. As you get closer into your rotations, your wards and whatnot, same exposure kind of practice uh, exists. Without the pressure of feeling like you need to do a certain amount now, the whole idea is building your portfolio that we could tell a story six years from now to somebody and saying, this is really what I want to do. And here how I was shown proof that this is what I'm interested in. Let's say you chase the cardiothoracic part down. Maybe you find somebody who's letting you join in a surgery relatively soon. And then maybe you join in them on a research project like uh, several months from now. And then you do your surgery rotation and you realize that you just love surgery in general. 
you it's not necessarily cardiothoracic, but you love surgery in general. There is a story that you're building over time of this person who is specifically interested in one component and then realize like this is amazing. Um, and then you can, you know, broaden out. So to answer your question, like how soon should you start pursuing career paths? It's as early as you think you have an interest in it, but just to explore the interest, because the goal is over time, you have a pathway that you have that is designed around your interests that is built upon prior interest. So you have clearly some experiences or stories or interests that have pointed you towards cardiothoracics. And then ideally you can continue to add more experiences that either affirm those or take those away. Because then in the future, if you just say, I like geriatrics and I thought I liked cardiothoracic surgery, but I really just like cardiology and I like geriatrics, but it's really because I like clinic life and I liked internal medicine, then I want to choose a field of just cardiology. You see how both of those combine into a future who somebody picks a field that's perfect for them, but it's not designed around this pressure of I need to do A, B, and C. Just explore both of those fields very naturally and move to the next step. If you're shadowing somebody and it seems amazing, ask how you can work in a research project with them. The research project is not an interest. Find what other things you would be doing to explore that interest. Either shadow more, you know, um, work with those people on quality improvement projects if you do, you know, if that's what you enjoy. Um, but don't feel pressured to do the research, the community service, and the shadowing just to fill your portfolio just to build your story, because you'll probably be surprised six years from now, that person who thought this would be interesting, and that absolutely hates that. And that happened to me, you know, um, the fields that I thought I was going into didn't end up being my field. Like I thought I was going to be a pediatrician. Um, you know, I worked with autistic kids for a year going into it. And then I realized that working with kids is great, but one, they don't communicate as well, because obviously like they're super young. And two, you have to deal with parents, which I was not a fan of. Um, but I realized I enjoy the medicine interacting with patients. So that's why I'm in internal medicine now, but that story changes, right? So the more experiences you have, despite what you choose at the very end of it, you'll have a story of saying, this is like, here's my story. I thought I was going to do a, B and C. I did these projects because to tell me if I liked them or not. And I did like this and I didn't like this. So that's why I'm here. And so somebody doesn't have to see a huge portfolio. They just see a very natural progression to point them to the ultimate career you choose. So each experience you choose should just be affirming your interest and then identifying a little bit better of what you wanna do. And ideally, whoever employer you choose, whatever residency you choose in the future, depending on like where somebody, if somebody else is listening to this and they have the same questions, they can say like, here's a very natural understanding that this person had these interests and this is ultimately where I'd let them. And I can see why they wanna do this at the very, like very end of it. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that makes complete sense. And it's totally reasonable now that I think about it. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if I were, you know, the person that is to look at applications for, um, say, for a surgical specialty rotation, it's like I, I, I can't expect anyone to have done everything since the time they started medical school to essentially land them in this place. Um, it's it's a bit a bit extreme, I think. Um, and yeah, I guess I just have to try to take a bit of the pressure off of myself totally. um, to feel like I have to be doing everything um, in alignment with a certain specialty in order to be considered. Yeah. Um, but life isn't like that. <laughs> it is. I mean, so, this is, yeah. you have the beauty um, of, you have the beauty of both time. And the most important thing you want is like, you know, let's just say there's two surgical specialty rotations that you're going for. And one of them does want somebody who is like completely dedicated from day one to the surgical specialty. And even if that means that that person sacrificed their happiness or evenings or weekends, that's who they want. But that ultimately just based off what you told me is not the specialty rotation that you want to go into because then you're going to be in a rotation that forces you to sacrifice your weekends and your days and your loved ones, the volleyball and the roller skating. So, you can still in, end up in a rotation in a specialty that fits perfectly for you. But if that future rotation is demanding that of you and it doesn't correlate with the ultimate things you want now, as well as in five years, then it may not be the best match. And that's perfect to learn. Right. Uh, that, yeah. Yeah. I, I guess um, that would sort of be like indicative of the person that they want. Mm -hmm. um, 
And if, if yeah, like you said, if you haven't been that kind of person or, or that sort of lifestyle hasn't appealed to you, then you probably don't want to go into that specialty. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you very much um, for your answers. All right, guys, before we get back to the episode, I want to talk about the sponsor of this episode, which is our med school domination bundle that we have for you here at the MD journey. It's essentially a bundle of books and courses with the blueprints and step-by-step -step advice that I use to help me succeed in medical school and really become a combination of both happy, effective, and still being able to have the ultimate career that I wanted. If you guys are interested in checking out the books and courses that are included in the bundle, that'll be linked for you down below. But most importantly, you'll also be able to find the feedback and testimonials from past students that includes medical students, pre meds, nursing students, physician assistants, all to help you succeed on your medical journey, but do it with less stress. Drop a link down below, but let's get back to the episode. I just want to ask, um, what was like your sort of defining moment in medical school where you realized that you actually don't have to do as much as you think you should be doing? Like, how did you actually find that balance? Um, and how did you sort of, you know, move on from being sort of the anxious student. <laughs> I, I, it's a, it's a bit of a, a, a growth exercise. Um, but I think the more you start hearing other people, whether it be your family, your loved ones, your significant other, or complete strangers saying, are you even in medical school? Like, how do you balance that? There is a part of you that doesn't look like a medical student. They don't look like that stress example that everyone seems to be, uh, hold true then you meet that and you realize that you're on the right side you're on the right path um because i freaking enjoyed medical school i enjoyed the people that i was with i enjoyed what i was learning i enjoyed the the thing i would be able to do one day which i'm doing now which is take care of people so over time i realized that i am still enjoying this i'm still doing well right i didn't want to use less hours just so I could spend more time just goofing off. I used less hours and made them efficient as possible. And again, that's an excessive exercise over time. But if my loved ones didn't think that I was in medical school just because I was so relaxed and I had free time to do things like the MD journey, that just meant that I had that nice balance, right? So people can look at you and say, you don't look stressed. You look happier. You look like you're really enjoying life. You feel like you have things figured out and everyone wants to figure things out. But what that means is that they just want to see an example of other people who are doing what they want to do with, with the time that they have. So if for me, that meant that I already had a workout in and my classmates, like how in the world are you able to fit in fitness? That seems silly question, right? If you think in retrospect that yeah. can you fit 30 minutes into your life, like to work on your personal health, but it feels like a natural sacrifice that we have to do when we're in medicine. So if you ask yourself, like, what is the optimal life that I would want to live? with this busy, you know, hellacious schedule that there is as a medical student where I have like this many hours, this many slides, this many years of sacrifice and ask yourself like, what do I not want to sacrifice? That's why I said happiness is number one. Um, then those components of your part of your life, everyone sees that you're still fit. You're still hanging out with your loved ones. You know, you're still hanging out with your family. You're still doing and exploring new hobbies, working on projects like this. And they just like, how did this, you just have it figured out. But I didn't, it was just a progress kind of thing. You know, I would work on the MD journey and realize that, oh man, I've like, I should have spent less hours here and more hours studying, but then it's, it was a lesson over time. Um, or I would spend less time with my loved ones than I wanted and more time on a test. And I realized that whatever grade I got, those last extra three hours didn't impact the final grade. So then I could spend more time with my loved ones. And it's just a lesson like, here is my optimal picture of what my life would look like. Uh, and here are the things that I will not sacrifice. And as you start seeing people compliment you or you start to realize that this is, this has been great. I've enjoyed this week because I've gotten to hang out with these people and work out and watch movies and whatever, you know, those are 30 minute sacrifices, but they're not sacrifices. They're investments in a future happy form of you. Um, that is more motivation and more encouragement to continue to remain that balanced. Um, because you just continue to walk with a little bit of a life doesn't stress me out as much because life is the way I've designed it and there will be stressful parts, but I know how to tackle those. Um, and I also know things aren't as not as big of a deal. You know, I didn't want to become the, the best med student on my institution. That's not the goal. My goal is to just to use the time that I had to become the best medical student I could be during that time. Um, so bottom answer is just using the time you have effectively to create the life that you want. 
um, without stressing yourself out because everyone does that and no one wants to be that person. So we might as well not do that and use small things over time to become that unstressed version. That doesn't mean that you won't be stressed. Okay. <laughs> um, as, as everyone that's on Instagram, even myself on YouTube, that point this picture that you'll be this happiest medical student every single day is not true. Um, but if it is true more often than not, then that's all that matters. Powerful words. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Well, Chelsea, it's a pleasure having you. Thanks for asking all those great questions. And uh, we'll link all of your social media stuff down below so you know, everyone can show you their love. But also just keep us updated on how things are going and see you know how to reach me. So just let me know how things are going. Uh, but thanks for joining us and hopefully you have a great day. Thanks for having me. Of course. See you later. All right, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoy this banger of an episode that we had with Chelsea. Uh, lots of great questions that really just got me going in terms of giving advice that I really wanted to or have given throughout this channel, but all in one place. We talked about productivity. We talked about how to study better. We also talked about this important concept of how to truly make yourself feel like you have it figured out in medical school, how to have this life where medical school is scheduled into your life instead of your life into medical school. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, just take a quick second, hit that thumbs up down below. It really takes a second for us to go ahead and make these episodes to edit them for you. So all you have to do is just take a second and just hit that like button down below. It truly helps me out. Also tells me you want more content like this, keep it going. And if you guys haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below on YouTube to get two videos just like this. And also go ahead and follow me on Instagram at the MD journey to get little short bits of advice just like this on IGTV given to you every few days. And as always, I have to thank my guest and Chelsea was a great guest asking some amazing questions during this episode that really got me going. And also show her some love down below in the comments and ask any questions that you guys have for me or for her down below and I'd be happy to answer them. But that being said, guys, as always, thank you for joining me on my journey. Hopefully I've been a little help to you on yours. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then check out this video on a full walkthrough of how you can use Anki to study like a pro. It's really helped me out in medical school. Hopefully it helps you out. But thank you guys for as always for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace, my friends.